Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. So today uh, I am going to do a breakdown of the trailer that just came out for Ryan Johnson's Knives Out, which is set to hit theaters this Thanksgiving. Uh, now the story basically follows uh, an eccentric family uh, that their patriarch, the the grandfather, who's played by Christopher Plummer, uh, is. Uh, killed on the night of his birthday and a an inspector who's played by uh, Daniel Craig comes in uh, in order to interview his eccentric family thinking that one of them is the culprit uh, and this is marketed as a modern day who done it now uh, here's uh, the thing with the beginning of this trailer and also I noticed something with the promo art now uh, Ryan Johnson is a self-absorbed turd to uh, to put it uh, bluntly. Uh, I don't really like him as a person, but I'm willing to separate the art from the artist in this scenario. Uh, but I can't help noticing that uh, every piece of promo that is for this uh, has his name plastered all over it. It has his name plastered all over it, even more than the actors. And this film has a lot of really good actors in it. You have Daniel Craig, you have Chris Evans, you have Christopher Plummer, even though it seems like he's not going to be in it for that much. Uh, you have Jamie Lee Curtis, you have Don Johnson, you have Michael Shannon. Uh, you have a ton of people in this that are really good actors and some Academy Award winners. Uh, I believe Michael Shannon, I think, has won an Academy Award. I could be wrong about that. But uh, really, they're not center stage. Ryan Johnson has kind of put his his name on it. And I remember the promo uh, image that I saw for it, which was, I believe, a poster. And it said, uh, a Ryan, it said Knives Out, and then below that, in, in a little bit smaller text, it said, a Ryan Johnson whodunit. Um, and he doesn't have the cred to get away with that. Uh, you know, he's not a Tarantino, he's not a Scorsese, he's not a Spielberg. Um, he's made literally three films, three theatrical films that I am aware of, Brick, Looper, and Last Jedi. Um, and this, this will be his fourth film now. Um, I do not think that, uh, he... He, he is essentially, every film for him is almost like an ego trip, and that's what this feels like already going into the trailer, seeing the promo images and seeing the stuff that's popped up already. But going into the actual trailer, um, we pick up with uh, the detective who's played by Daniel Craig, and he's basically kind of uh, interviewing the family members and talking to them. And this is where we get into another thing that I kind of have always had a bit of an issue with with Ryan Johnson, and that's his writing. Um the Last Jedi is garbage from a writing perspective. Uh, it is very cyclical. Um, a lot of the plot lines don't go anywhere. We found out later on that he was literally working with a first draft. Uh, he did not rewrite the script. He did not have anybody come on to, to double check him, uh, which is the mistake that George Lucas made on the prequels, but Ryan Johnson is far less capable of a writer than George Lucas, at least as far as we can tell. Uh, but there's a line by Jamie Lee Curtis uh, that's kind of, it, it feels awkward. It feels almost like, um, just to go into a bit of an explanation so you kind of get where I'm coming from here. Uh, so Daniel Craig is asking uh, Jamie Lee Curtis about the, the, the night of the party, and he says, how was the party? And she says, oh, it, it, do you mean pre my dad's death? Oh, it was wonderful. And it's, it's like, it feels like that line is almost, it, it feels like it should be played more cartoony. And by cartoony, I mean, it feels like there should be somebody with a bigger uh, atmosphere saying that. It feels, it doesn't feel like that's something that you just mutter and then go away. It feels like that's a line that, you know, you should, you should, it, 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 this feels like if this was like a Coen Brothers film, it would work. But because the, the direction is so flat, it doesn't. Because it's it seems like it's supposed to be darkly comedic in some way. Because um, there is a fair amount of comedy in the trailer. And some of it does work, and I will get to that. It mostly involves Chris Evans. But that line, and there's also a line later uh, where it seems like there's, uh, there's a little dialogue between Daniel Craig and one of the uh, other uh, members of the family. One, I can't remember uh, what actress she plays. But later on, she basically asks uh, if they're allowed to leave or ask about the case. It's some, it, it's basically, it's a, it's a, it's a conversation that you feel like if it was in a Tarantino film, it would be written a lot better, but because it's not written very well, it comes off again, very plain. And it, it, the actress herself uh, comes off very drab uh, in the way that she portrays the line. Again, these feel like lines that should be taken far more comedically. This feels like, um, 
if anybody remembers the movie Alien Resurrection, uh, which a lot of people probably don't, the film was written by Joss Whedon, but it was directed by somebody who thought that all the lines were literal. They didn't realize that there was a lot of tongue-in-cheek humor uh, in the script. So a lot of lines that were supposed to come off comedically did not because they were played very deadpan. Uh, they were played serious, as opposed to being a little, you know, kind of half-jokey, half-smiley kind of thing. Uh, and it didn't work in the movie. And that's really what this trailer feels like for the majority of it, is it feels like there's some dark humor in here, and a lot of it doesn't work. The only humor that does work is the humor they have with Chris Evans. And Chris Evans kind of steals this trailer, and to be honest, he actually seems like the only legitimately funny person uh, in... The, in the the entire trailer, even though the last line he has is kind of like, eh, okay, that kind of sucked. Um, and there's a, there's a specific scene where he's looking at all his family members and he, he's telling them all, he's basically pointing at all of them to eat and telling them all to eat shit individually, uh, which is really funny just because of his physical acting and the way that he's kind of pointing at them and playfully doing it. And he, you can tell he doesn't give a shit at all. Uh, it, it's actually funny and it works because Chris Evans is, is adept at comedy. And uh, I actually enjoyed him in one of his very early roles. I don't remember if it was his first one or not, but not another teen movie, uh, where I think he's very hilarious at doing uh, that kind of tongue in cheek, that kind of tongue in cheek, uh, you know, comedy that was very that spoof esque comedy uh, that was in that movie, and it feels like he's channeling into that a little bit in this, which is probably why I enjoyed that. I, I enjoyed that particular section of the trailer, but you go beyond that, and. There's really nothing else that stands out in this. Uh, you know, it's a who done it. You know, they kind of they don't go. Th obviously, they don't say who actually did it. But basically, all the members of the family are suspected. They show that there's this big wheel of knives. Again, I'm I'm assuming that'll come up somehow in the script. It shows like a hand like taking one of the knives off the wheel, and then you know there's a few shots of you know people you know putting their hands up like they're about to get stabbed or something. Um, it's uh, again. The visuals are okay. The visuals are not bad. Um, it's kind of like the, the house that they're in is kind of like one of those old gothic houses. Um, it, f it feels very much like a, uh, a house on Haunted Hill or something like that, or a haunting or, or something like that. You know, the house you'd see in one of those films, um, an old, like, miserly mansion, um, which is, you know, the classic whodunit setting. Um, but, you know, th this feels an awful lot like if you were watching Clue, but Clue was played seriously. That's kind of what this feels like, and it was also rated R. Um, I don't believe Clue was rated R. I think it was rated PG-13, but I could be wrong. But that's what it feels like. This feels like a more serious version of Clue. Um, and not serious in a good way, as I've just explained. But the other thing that I kind of have that's kind of weird about this is this movie is coming out on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is a huge family holiday where everybody comes together, you know, the whole family comes together, and Ryan Johnson chooses to make this uh, film around the birthday of the, the patriarch of the family, who, again, is played by Christopher Plummer. So, why wouldn't you set it around Thanksgiving if it's coming out on Thanksgiving? I don't get that. That seems like a very easy change you could have made instead of having, or have his birthday on Thanksgiving. Or something like that. Because, again, the movie itself is coming out on Thanksgiving. I feel like that's a plot point that probably should have been changed a little bit uh, in pre-production before they actually went into this when the, when the date for the movie was, was a hard set. But, uh, ultimately, this, uh, this trailer, I don't feel it's impressive. I think it borrows a lot of things from other trailers. I think it borrows a lot of things from kind of certain genre films like Clue. Um... Like I said, I like Chris Evans with the humor. I think that did a very good job. Uh, the other characters fall very deadpan. The dialogue is horrendous uh, in most cases. And uh, I will also say this. Daniel Craig can pull off a southern accent. That was actually somewhat convincing. But aside from those things, uh, those you know, Daniel Craig and Chris Evans were really the only two that kind of shined out in that trailer. Everybody else was kind of like, bleh. Uh, but it, it, it didn't impress. It didn't impress, and... The fact of the matter is, I don't really care for Ryan Johnson as a director or as a person. Uh, so, 
I uh, so I I don't know uh, about this movie right now. It could, you know, if they do a second trailer, maybe they show stuff that isn't as crappy as what they showed with this. But generally, with a first trailer, you want to be able to show some of the better stuff in the film so that you you know you hook people. Uh, I don't think this is going to to hook a lot of people. Um, and the fact that he he plasters on the the trailer that uh, director of Last Jedi, Star Wars: The Last Jedi, and Looper. Um, I don't think that's going to make a lot of people want to come to this movie uh, for the most part. But I'd like to know what you think. Uh, do you plan on seeing this? Uh, do you like whodunit films? Again, like Clue uh, or, you know, stuff in that genre. Um, you know, how do you feel about this? I'd like to see uh, your responses in the comments. Again, I like to read them. I like to know what you're thinking. Uh also, I will list the trailer in the description as usual, so if you want to go over and watch it, feel free. Uh, hit the like button, hit the bell for notifications, subscribe, and remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you?